Hello, everybody. Welcome to the joint hearing between the Committee on Government Operations and our good friends and the Committee on Transportation, Culture, and the friends. Arts, our good friends. Uh, in, the, in the event that this thing gets discontinued, it's a house reso, so we'll pick it up. Okay. Um, with that being said, it's HCR 37 HD1. I'm just kidding, everybody. We'll, we'll post free notice and all that good stuff so that you know we can pick it up. But uh, first up, we have Keith Regan, Comptroller. Afternoon, Chair, Chairs, Co-Chairs, and Members. I obviously am not Keith Regan. I am Gordon Wood, appearing on behalf of Keith Regan. Uh, the department stands on this written testimony, and I'm here if you have any questions for us. Okay, with comments. No wonder you're laughing at my joke. Okay, uh, next up, Karen <laughs> Wall, Interim Executive Director, State Foundation of Culture and the Arts. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Go ahead. Hi, uh, hi Chair McKelvey, Chair Lee, members of the committee. I'm Karen Ewald, Executive Director of the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, and we also stand in uh, on our written testimony with comments. Okay, thank you so much. We also have written testimony from our good friend, Mr. Jared Silva, pontificating on his opposition to the measure. That's all we received on ACR 37 House Draft 1. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to testify? Um, Aloha, yes. Hi, my name is Mele Kulsa. Um, I am testifying on behalf of the Nature Conservancy. You might, are you, are you testifying on the um, three o'clock or 3.01 p.m. agenda on HCR 81? Yes, I'm sorry, am I too soon? Oh yeah, we're not there just yet. Yeah. Uh, we'll get back here in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, you want to you want to come and testify still? Or was that the time? We'll leave it to one minute because we have another rezo as a co-chair. Uh, Angela Melody on testifying in strong support um, for the arts. Um, so the importance of art it transcends far beyond borders or cultures, and all. Um, so art is all around us, whether you hear your favorite song on the radio or drive by a mural, you experience art every day. And we know that um, this elevates our everyday experiences and is common to lose sight of the overall impacts of art on communities. Um, so, you know, why is art important? I'd like to um, talk about a um, the importance of art through um like a therapeutic setting. No, wait, we, we appreciate that, but this oh. is about a fund transfer. That's fund transfer, so okay. Really just focus in on that. Um, okay, I don't have a comment about that. Okay. I was just gonna state gonna why have... art should get invested in. We're, we we definitely okay. agree, but in order to get to 301 agenda. Okay, okay. The, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Appreciate you being here though. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on the measure? Um, seeing none members, are there questions of either DAG or state culture? That will recess for decision making. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, are we back? Okay, after conferring with my illustrious co-chair here from the TCA committee, um, while we do recognize the testimony of State Foundation yeah. and DAGs that there is a memorandum um, already in place uh, for this kind of fund transfers, we wanna go ahead and support the conversation continuing of our colleague from Maui. So we'll just go ahead and move this rezo on as is. Are there any questions or comments? Anybody at all? Okay, if not, uh, we will go ahead, uh, go as is. Um, my vice chair, do you mind taking the vote for us there, sir? So the recommendation is to pass HCR 37, HD1 as is. Chair McKelvey? Yes. Senator Gabbard is excused. Senator San Buenaventura? Aye. I vote yes. Senator Awa. That is excuse chair your recommendations. Okay, thank you, committee members. Thank you, uh, TCA committee. Same recommendation. Okay. The Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts chair's recommendation is to pass unamended HCR 37 House Draft 1. 
Chair Lee. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator Keoho Kaloli. Aye. Senator Awa is excused. Measure is adopted. Okay, Mr. thank Chair. you. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry about that. Let me cut you off. Okay, thank you guys. Good afternoon. We're convening the uh, Committee on Transportation and Culture and the Arts here in Senate Conference Room 225. Uh, we have a few resolutions and um, governor's messages up this afternoon. If we do get cut off, we will repost for a later date. Um, in the meantime, up first is HCR 81, recognizing August 8th as Hawaiian Honey Creeper Celebration Day. And justifying first is DLNR. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair, Good afternoon. Vice Chair, and members. My name is Lindsay Neatman, representing DLNR. The department stands on our written testimony, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Up next is the Nature Conservancy. Good afternoon. Sorry. Um, Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Um, my name is Mele Kalsa. I'm testifying on behalf of the Nature Conservancy in support of HCR 81 to recognize August 8, 2023, as Hawaiian Honey Day. Um, the honey creepers have important cultural and ecosystem values. Ecologically, they are pollinators and seed dispersers uh, that have evolved alongside our native Hawaiian plants for millions of years. They are critical to the health of our native forests, which is the source of our island's fresh water. Culturally, they are Tinalao and Amatua, physical representations of the gods and ancestors, and chant celebrate their existence. Um, we support this because populations of Hawaiian honey creepers are declining, and we hope that by raising public awareness about the birds, we can also raise public awareness not only about the threats that they face, especially for mosquito-borne diseases, but also raise awareness about the ongoing work by the Nature Conservancy and others in the Birds Not Mosquitoes Partnership um, who are working hard to save the birds. Um, this resolution is strongly supported by many groups of school children, uh, ranging from elementary to high school and from schools all across the state. Uh, many of them cannot be here today due to the later time of this hearing. Um, but a few weeks ago, you know, there were nearly half a dozen school groups that testified in strong support of this resolution. Um, the Kiki want this because they want to celebrate the birds and they don't want them to go extinct. So please support this resolution for them and for the birds that they care so much about. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Testifying next is uh, Kylie with CDAPS. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Chair, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. My name is Kylie Lefebvre. I am uh, the CDAPS planner. Uh, that's a coordinating group on alien pest species. Um, as mentioned uh, in, in by the previous testifiers, I've been working with a bunch of students across the state um, that unfortunately, you know, they wish, I'm sure that they could have been here in the room with you. Um, it's a little bit of a tough time for them being in school. Um, I do see hopefully one testifier on Zoom. So they might be... Um, testifying on behalf of all 2,000 students that we've been working with across the state. No pressure on that on that side. Um, but really, you know, I just want to um, mention that, you know, all, outreach in general is crucial to the success of conservation programs that we have here in Hawaii. One great example of that is um, Ohia and uh, the great success that we've had at um, bringing that into as a household name across the state. We had uh, some legislation work with uh, annual proclamations for Ohia Lehua Day, and we worked hard last year to designate it as a state endemic, endemic tree, which we we're successful at. And so now, you know, few people in the state don't know what Ohia is and also about the plight of rapid Ohia death now. So that's a good case in point. 
um, I'd like to just say that, you know, uh, having a Hawaiian Honey Creeper Celebration Day will help to coordinate and multiply our efforts across the state if we have that created space and time to be able to celebrate them. Um, and of course, knowing that we have the support of our legislature uh, will help us further that um, that effort. So let's help to make some of those other lesser known honey creepers like the Akohe Kohe or the Palila, um, the QVQ, some of those that are, you know, potentially going extinct within the next year or or few years, let's make those household names, not just the EEV that everybody knows, right? So let's let's get, uh, give all of them um, a name and a place in our hearts and our minds. So um, thank you so much for hearing this and for um, hopefully asking for your support on this measure. Thank you. Thank you. And I uh, hope you appreciate that I artfully dodged uh, mangling your name this time. <laughs> um, Testify next is the American Bird Conservancy. In support, um, we have a number of individuals signed up, all in support. Uh, we did have um, third grade at Volcano School of Arts and Sciences with us this afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, go ahead. Aloha, my name is Aubrey Carson from Volcano School of Arts and Sciences in Volcano, Hawaii. Our third class has been celebrating the Hawaiian Honey Creeper. We are advocating to you, our legislators, to help protect and bring our awareness of our native Hawaii forest birds, to advocate for H, the bill HCR81, celebrating Na Native Hawaiian Honey Creeper Day. There were once 55 different native species of honey creepers. Today, only 17 remain, with 11 being endangered or threatened. Of 142 endemic bird species of Hawaii, 95 have gone extinct. My class has researched Hawaii's honey creepers and then presented each bird to one another. We have learned that honey creepers are very special because they are only found here in Hawaii. We know that once they are gone, they are gone forever. Our forest needs our native birds. They help our watershed. Bird droppings spread seeds and without the droppings, our native forest birds can, cannot be propagated. Native forest birds plants cannot be propagated. And we know that once they are gone, they are gone forever. Bird dropping spread seeds without the droppings or native forest plants cannot be propagated. We also lose our native forest plants as, as well. Without Hawaii forced to catch rain, the land floods and causes erosion. The erosion at Pinau Bay, we saw how the coral reef was destroyed, then thrown up onto the beach. Birds are sensitive near their eyes, mosquitoes can bait them. And mosquitoes carry avian malaria and pox. This killed our native birds. Our climate is changing due to carbon dioxide gases. Mosquitoes can travel higher due to climate change. It is now warmer in higher elevations. Unfortunately, ungulates destroy higher elevation forests on Hawaii Island. The cloud forest is covered with gorse. Natives cannot grow. On Saddle Road, there, there's these huge herds of wild goats, hundreds and hundreds grazing. There are lots of babies in these herds. They're growing, growing in number. We are the future of Hawaii. Would you still like to see Apapaneno here, trees of volcano? Would you like to see native forests at higher elevations instead of course? We'd like you to help us save our watershed and save our native birds. We are advocating to legislators to help protect and bring awareness of our native forest birds. This letter is for the Hawaiian honey creeper. Aloha, Volcano School of Arts and Sciences, Mrs. Warner's third grade class. Okay, introduce. Here, here are a few of the honey creepers from our island that we would like to share. You could, uh, yeah, share those quickly so we can all see them. Okay. Akia Pola Ao, endangered. Akepa, endangered. Halila, critically endangered. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Great job. Hello. <laughs> okay, that's um, all the live testifiers we have signed up. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify? Let's come forward.
Angela Melody Young testifying on behalf of CARES in strong support. So in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, thousands of kilometers away, um, lies the Hawaiian um, islands. Despite its remote location and geological youth, this chain of islands is bursting with life, plants, insects, birds. One group of birds endemic to these islands is the Hawaiian honeycreepers. The typical Hawaiian honeycreeper feeds on nectar, has brightly colored feathers, and sings a canary-like song. At least um, about 56, 57 species of Hawaiian honeycreepers have existed, but 18, um, yeah, but 18 of them have vanished. Um, like other species that are also island-dwelling species, um, the honeycreeper are becoming endangered. For example, in 2004, the species of honeycreepers with the scientific name Milan prosopis possoma became the most recent casualty after the last individual died in captivity. Of the handful of species that still survive, a few are considered to be critically endangered by the International Union of Conservation of Nature, and a few of the other species are considered vulnerable. Honeycreeper Day will help to raise awareness about this imp important issue, so um, hence our support. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure? All right, anybody else on Zoom? If not, no on Zoom, chair. Oh. No one on Zoom, Chair. Thank you. If not, any questions? If not, thank you very much, everyone. Um, let's move on to the next measure, HCR 133, urging the Department of Transportation to conduct a study to establish safe routes to school. Testifying first on 133 is the Department of Transportation in support and one individual in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify in this measure this afternoon? If not, there's no one to ask questions of, so let's move on to our governor's messages. Um, up first is GM568 submitting for consideration and confirmation to the State Highway Safety Council, gubernatorial nominee Tiffany Ojima for a term to expire 6-30-2023. Uh, testifying first is DOT in support, uh, Sanhai Government Strategies in support, and additional four individuals all in support. That's uh, all the testimony we have. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? If not, Sujima, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Tiffany Ajima. Thank you so much for your consideration of my nomination. I've been sitting on the council for a few months now, and I'm very interested in highway safety. Um, I appreciate your support and happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the nominee? Thank you. Uh, just real sure. quick, in, just uh, as a matter of course, um, we have like the um, most, I think, frustratingly high number of fatalities and serious injuries on our roadways. Um, we just hit 19 this year, which is three more than we were at last year, which was a record year. Uh, do you have any thoughts on where we should go and what we should do? Um, I would look to the Department of Transportation and really work with them as a member of the council to hear um, the community concerns and also to um, problem solve with them. Okay, thank you <laughs> thank very you. much. All right. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, oh, unless anyone else has questions. You know, I have just, uh, a question and a comment. It, you know, the, the committee is pretty much um, regarding the transportation side. Um, however, I'm, I'm just curious to see if you folks look at the entire transportation highway system, cleaning of the highways. So I'm just wondering if it will ever come up as a discussion because our highways are pretty neglected with regards to cutting the grass and picking up the trash. I come from Wanalua area down to the capital, and it seems like it's getting worse. So I'm just kind of curious if that's part of the discussion. Maybe bring it up if litter has anything to do with your transportation council. 
Sure. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'd be happy to communicate that back to the council. I think yes. it does have a nexus. Yes. Yeah, appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Best of word on. I will. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to GM 569, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the State Highway Safety Council gubernatorial nominee, Tiffany Lightfoot, for a term to expire 6-30-2024. And testifying on 569, again, is Department of Transportation in support, um, AMR in support, and three individuals all in support. That's all the testimony we have on this one. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this nominee? If not, um, mm -hmm. good afternoon, Ms. Lightfoot. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is my name is Tiffany Lightfoot, and I thank you very much for um, hearing this governor's message and considering my nomination to the State Highway Safety Council. It'd be my privilege to serve if 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 confirmed. Thank you. Are there any questions? I guess some way I'll just jump in and. Um, uh, ask if there's any particular, uh, given, given the number of deaths and fatalities and everything on our system, is there anything in particular um, you want to dive into and recommend or take a look at? Certainly, thank you for thank you for that. I too am concerned about the the safety of our highways. Working in EMS for over twenty years, um, I've seen my fair share of tragedies. And working in administration, looking at the big picture. I've seen opportunities for us to improve. In fact, here in Hawaii, we've seen good progress with some of our traffic solutions where we pull stakeholders together to find solutions for um, areas that we know that are dangerous. So knowing that we have seen success um, with some of these um, solution meetings, I think that may be an opportunity for us to bring um, that approach to our highways as well. All right, thank you. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to GM 591, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the King Kamehameha Celebration Commission, gubernatorial nominee, Lena Ala Lopez, for a term to expire 6-30-2024. Testifying first is the uh, Ho'omohala Ho Ho Molokai Foundation in support. Uh, Stacy Cravello. I'll present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, thank you. In support, an additional five individuals all in support. That's all the testimony we have. Is there anyone else wishing to testify this afternoon? If not, seeing as... There she is. Oh, there she is. Good afternoon. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Lena Ala Lopez, and I have been nominated for the King Kamehameha Celebration. I am born and raised here on Moloka'i, and I'm ready to step up in our community for our community, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, if not, um, good luck with it, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our final uh, measure this afternoon, GM 632, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, gubernatorial nominee Randall Fujiki for a term to expire 6-30-2026. And testifying first is the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts with comments. Uh, we have uh, Susan Brown comments. Uh, downtown Art Center. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, my name is Sandra Pohl and I live in Hon Honolulu. I am the executive director of the Downtown Art Center. Um, it's a nonprofit arts that has, was established itself as the destination location for the arts community in the heart of Honolulu. The DAC uh, positions art, culture, and the power of creativity as central elements of a sustainable economic development and creative tourism strategy. I am writing in strong support of the uh, confirmation of Randa Fujiki to the Hawaii State Foundation of Culture and the Arts. Randy has been a volunteer and advisor to the Downtown 
Arts Center for the past three years. He has brought a breadth of knowledge and counsel to his, in assisting our community art organization. His involvement has always been in the best interest of the arts. Randy is knowledgeable about the arts in general and what is happening in the state of Hawaii. He is willing to listen and finds the time to ferret out the community needs. He actively supports many arts organizations with time, talent, and treasures. He has a broad network of colleagues and friends that are doers and leaders in the arts community at every level. Thank you for listening to my testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, testifying next is John Hara Associates, Inc. in support. Uh, Kylie Chun. Now present on Zoom, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Francis Oda. Oh, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, uh, I, I'm really privileged to uh, support this nomination. Randy is really a unique person in our community, has great knowledge about art and many other things, urban planning, a uh, broader sense of where Hawaii should go environmentally. And the thing about him is that he has a lot of passion and he is the type of guy that uh, will follow through on things and get things done. So I strongly recommend Randy to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have additional testimony from uh, a little more than a dozen others in support. That's all the testimony we have. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify this afternoon? All right, if not, are there any questions? Um, if not, Mr. Fujiki, I'd like to say a few words. The dress. <laughs> Good afternoon, be comfortable. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Lee and Vice Chairman Inouye and members of the committee. I'm Randall Fujiki and I'm here for confirmation for the Commission for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. I'll keep it very short. I've served on the commission since September 2022 and I'm here for uh, confirmation by the Senate. Um, you have my resume, you have my background, so I'm not going to go into all of that. I'm very involved with art, and I have many friends, and I'm a passionate collector and a supporter of art. So I appreciate this opportunity to continue to be a commissioner and appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Mr. Fujiki. Just a few questions and thank you for taking the time to meet with me. Um, two questions that I have for you is why do you wanna serve? And secondly is, do you have any strategic priorities um, if you were to continue on serving on this commission? That's good questions. Um, I really felt that uh, art is an important part and as an architect and an urban designer mm -hmm. um, and having served at the city and county and being part of the mayor's art group, I. I mean, it's a passionate thing. I've lived in New York and New Jersey and many places. So art has always been an important part. And if you come to see my house, I've got too much art. So I have just, I'm a passion. It's part of my life and my passion. So as I volunteered, I really felt that the mission of the State Foundation is to promote, perpetuate, preserve culture and arts in Hawaii. And that is a passion of mine. Um, I think that the commission, uh, we, we need to get a new chairman and that's going to help us in our movement, in our next process, as you, as we talked about it in the commission to work on our long-term goals, as well as our, um, what we do there and promote the arts. And we, we appreciate the support of the Senate. Um, in funding and supporting the, the work. I, I came here Friday and was, you know, fabulous. I wish mm -hmm. some more elected officials open up their offices because I know some good art hidden away in the, behind those doors, but it was really fun to see your offices and amazed at the artwork that you have here within the state collection. Thank you. Just a brief 
another last follow-up that I have is um, in doing some research and, and homework on this particular commission, I know they've um, had some challenges um, in the past year, you know, you know, with, with respect to the chair or, um, you know, selecting the uh, executive director. So how do you see your role as a commissioner, you know, going through that processes and overcoming those challenges to eventually select, you know, a permanent director and, and, and moving forward? Yeah, I stepped into the commission just when this all happened uh, in September. So we were part of, we were, you know, a lot of our time was reviewing the whole situation. And I've, you know, we've gone through the process and I think it was a, it was a process that we had to be done and it was concluded. And I think that we're waiting for a new chairman. We were waiting for a new chairman to lead us in the direction of how we want, will select a new executive director. So um, that's all something that's going on right now. I think um, that's gonna be what's happening. I'm following the other, you know, working with the other commissions together as a team to make this change and happen. I'm still really learning more, more about, because we, we spent so much time on these, these controversial issues. I think I'm looking forward to me, knowing more about state foundation how that works and how i can help and what our role is as a commissioner thank you mr fujiki thank you mr chairman thank you i'm sorry that my office wasn't open <laughs> this year because it happened on the same mary monarch festival oh that we had yeah. so i, I had know. to what be, a wonderful i had to go yeah. home and and be with everyone else yeah. as well um you know i'm just curious are you folks responsible as well, caring for the building or doing your fundraisers? I'm sorry. You, you know the building yes. where you folks are? Yeah. Uh, is that your responsibility I think as well? I, I don't know the answer to that, but I, I believe that's part of our, and also part of DAGs. Yes. Because we, we serve under DAGs Correct. and there are DAGs people within the building. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So there are some things that, that the commission itself can do like opening up your doors and having arts at the Capitol uh, similarly, but do it at the foundation. But I, I, I believe so. I remember there was one time that there was a an event on the grounds outside and they opened up there. So we hope that you can continue to do that and earn some cash too. I mean, yes, you know, opening yes. up and I used to having, work halfway down the block and I used to work late and I was wondering all that noise was there. And I finally realized that there was events going on right there. I and remember so, then I used to one go, and I think I went I'm up in there. because I'm like you, I'm a collector of arts. And if you see my home in Hilo Bay, it's like I have to store some things <laughs> because I do love the arts, but not an artist per se. But um, and we thank you, you know, for being on the on the um, on the authority uh, on the foundation as well, because with your expertise, um, I think we also need that uh, as a member of the of the foundation. So thank you for contributing your volunteerism. We appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Other questions? Um, if not, I have just one. You know, a couple of hearings ago, we. You had some um, substantive bills related to state foundation and art and all that sort of thing. And um, there was some actually very passionate testimony given by a couple individuals who zoomed in on um, sort of the history, um, you know, long preceding any of us that are here today of the foundation and where it was investing its well, all of our resources and what kind of art. And there were, um, I forget the exact artist, but I think it was um, Sotoru Abe and like one or two others. Um, which the state foundation had invested a ton of money in, mm -hmm. um, which which we had, for which we had more art from those three artists than all the Native Hawaiian artists put together in the entire state collection, which is just kind of mind blowing. Um, but I raise this because obviously there's been a lot of concern, I think, from the broader public mm -hmm. about that kind of investment and where we ought to go. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, and I'm not I'm not the expert on it, but I. I'm a friend and a collector of Satoru, and she wrote me a letter and she said, you want me to come? I said, no, 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 come Satoru. But I also am a very good friend of another person that was gonna testify 
Kaili Chun, who I mm -hmm. met when she was a student at Princeton and we remain, remain friends. And she's a represents a very important part of Native Hawaiian art. And I know that's a very big passion. And I support that also. So I think um, I, as I learn, we'll, and we need to talk about that as an important part of the state collection is supporting Native Hawaiian artwork as well as local artists. I mean, Satoru Abe and the, his Metcalf uh, Chateau or Chalet, they, they were an incredible group of Asian local people that studied in New York and came back and really was um, um, an important foundation of that time of art. And that's kind of my part of my collection, but I really also support people like Ili Chan and things like that. And I have her work in my collection also. I guess how do you, and I'm new to this area, I'm, I'm, I, I, I certainly um, acknowledge I don't have a lot of depth in, in sort of the history in the art world, but how do you distinguish between your own personal interests with the art that you collect versus you know, the role that you'd be playing influencing what the state would be buying? Yeah. How, do you, how do you distinguish that? Well, I think, well, number one is I have a very broad range of interests and I'm open to everything. So I'm very open to all different kinds of art, whether it be painting, sculpture. Ka'ili actually does almost this installation art, which is to me amazing. If you went down to the, um, the Prince Hotel, her artwork is in the ceiling and it's all like thousand, 800 something little copper pieces there, um, replications of the fish that used to be there. And so art can be a lot of different things. And, you know, I know the construction, we have the 1% and there's a certain parameters to that. But to me, art can be music, culture, dance. But in our thing, I'm going to learn more about it through the foundation. But I think it's a, my eyes are really wide open and I appreciate all kinds of art. Yeah, I'm, I support what the chair is saying as well. Uh, and there are so many artists on each island that are uh, very popular in the art that they do. And I've seen like this gentleman on Maui uh, and his art is pretty much at most of the restaurants and stores that I see, but there are a lot of local artists that I tend to agree with what the chair is saying about, you know, where do we put, you know, all our, um, you know, dollars in into a certain basket that you want uh, a combination. Uh, and particularly with the culture that we have that's so popular throughout the world and Hawaii yes. means a lot yes. you know, to, to our visitors as well. Thank you so much. Thank Any you, chair. If yeah. not, all right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, We're ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, why don't we go into decision making on our 301 PM agenda on uh, the measures before us, beginning with HCR 81. This is recognizing uh, Hawaiian honey creepers celebration day. Uh, recommendation is to move out as is. Any discussion? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation on HCR 81 is to pass an amended. Chair Lee. Aye. Okay. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefanti. Aye. Senator Keoho Kaloli. Aye. Okay. Senator Awas. Aye. I hear you back here. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, moving on to HCR 133. Uh, this is related to safe routes to schools. Um, recommendations can be move this on with amendments. Um, we did have a chance to talk with the uh, introducer of this measure. Um, we, I'll note for the record, we have a number of bills moving related to safe routes to schools that will do uh, more and potentially appropriate funding and other things that are meaningful. So rather than just saying we should um, also do things like that, um, uh, we talked to the introducer and she had asked that this be amended um, reflecting some of the priority needs that ought to be identifying some of the needs that, that need to be addressed. Um, so we want to 
amend the resolution to focus on um, uh, safe routes to schools in the Waipahu area and adding in raised crosswalks and um, safer crossings in that particular area. Any discussion around this one? Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, so this is in addition to the language you already have here. Yeah? Yeah, we'll we'll, okay. we'll we'll amend it. We'll we'll pare it down so it's not broad, um, but rather relating to safe routes to schools in this particular area. Okay, because if you look at regular bills, we're always uh, the the attorney general's office is already recommending that we can't do specific uh, special interests. So I'm wondering if it has to do with resolutions as well. Uh, so and I, if not. Um, we can pass it as is and and see if there's going to be some um, sub note that we can do special interest for resolutions as well. So yeah, just to I, bring it up. I appreciate that. I think okay. I think this is okay because it's pertaining to a community rather okay. than a particular business or a specific entity. And okay. we had done a number of these in the last agenda that were for various communities around okay. the, All right. the states. I think we're okay. All right. Okay. But thank you for the, the reminder. That's important. Okay. Um, there's no discussion. Uh, Vice okay. Chair for the vote. Okay, Chair's recommendation on SCR 133 to pass with amendments with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Hearing none, Vice Chair, measure is adopted. Thank you. Moving on to GM 568 um, uh, for the State Highway Safety Council, Gubernatorial nominee Tiffany Yajima. Uh, recommendation is to advise and consent. Any discussion? If not, Vice Chair. Okay. Chair's recommendation on GM568 is to advise and consent. For this first one, Chair, uh, the Vice Chair will call for the roll. Chair Lee. Aye. Okay, Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Elefanti. Aye. Senator Keho Kaloli. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Okay, measure is adopted. Advice and consent is approved. Thank you. Moving on to GM569. Um, again, for the State Highway Safety Council, Gubernatorial nominee Tiffany Lightfoot, recommendation is to advise and consent. There's no discussion. Vice Chair. Okay. Uh, Chair's recommendation on GM 569 is to advise and consent. With five members present, any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay. Measure is adopted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, next is GM 591 uh, for the King Kamehameha Celebration Commission. Uh, Lena Ala Lopez, recommendation to advise and consent. Okay. Chair's. Okay. There's no discussion, Vice Chair. Okay. Chair's recommendation on GM 591 is to advise and consent with five members present. Any voting with reservations? Any no votes? Okay. Hearing none, Vice Chair, I mean, uh, Chair, measure is adopted. Thank you. And finally, uh, last on the agenda, GM 632 uh, for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, nominee Randall Fujiki. Uh, recommendation is to advise and consent. There's no discussion, Vice Chair. Okay, Chair's recommendation on GM 632 is to advise and consent. With five members present, any voting with reservations, any no votes? Hearing none, by, uh, Chair, uh, Chair Lee, measure is adopted. Thank you, thank you everybody, we're adjourned. Okay.